Okay, so um, this video is on uh, emergency thoughts and um, how do you deal with them? Especially, like say you get emergency thoughts, especially when you're trying to do Zen or the observer or feel the feelings or or just be in the zone. Um, uh, that's normal and that's the um, ego's job. Um, and it's quite, um, depends how complicated I get on this video. Um, the ego, which is which has lots of uh, tricks up its teal, uh, up its sleeves, uh, which are related to the to the um, chakras actually, and the lessons that you learn. You know, the sexual, the power, the voice, um, the third eye opening, and um, oops, my alarm off, and the third eye opening, and various chakras and various lessons which haven't been learnt over the lifetimes. The average advanced spiritual seeker has about 15 to 25 lifetimes. So a lot of baggage, a lot of lessons, a lot of errors. Um, and as soon as you try and be a dedicated spiritual student and get to those enlightened levels and pursue them, um, the ego has quite a lot of tricks up its sleeve. Um, where to uh, You've been hooked up before in past lifetimes. It knows you're vulnerable. It knows where your, all your weaknesses are. And it knows how to organize events. And it even knows, I mean, it sounds mystical, it sounds a bit a bit woo-woo, but it knows how to connect with other people in the in ego states and create um create scenarios whereby um you're tested. Um so sort of everyone who's who's not aligned gets sort of uh, recruited to offer offer tests so that can be with family with um, work situations whatever uh, especially when you're doing well i found that you know i've shared in videos before especially when i'm doing well i get into bliss states the ego usually comes with a backlash to try and pull you out um, and I, I shared the story before i mean i don't know why i'm sharing it but i'll share it again you know i'd, I'd sometimes go into these mystical states of just absolute bliss uh, almost to the extent of immobilization and wanting just to sit forever in a state of absolute bliss. And uh, it once happened, I was sitting in Hammersmith tube station, and someone was coming up the elevator behind me and spat on my head as they were going up, which is quite interesting as I was trying to bliss out and just sit in Hammersmith tube station, blissed out to have someone spit on your head. Anyway, um, that was uh, that caused a little bit of disconnection. And there was another day I was let out for the bus, so I was in a state of absolute bliss just before my house just to walk back and I couldn't even move down the road I was just blissed by the side of the road and um, and then someone came in their car right up and I was right next to the road I'd just come off the bus and they opened their window and spat on my face <laughs> you know and I've had this these funny themes you know it's like my karmic payback obviously I was like I, I think I was jealous in a past lifetime of all those spiritual zen masters and just spat spat whenever they were in a good place so i got these things come back and also i've had things of wearing expensive hats to spiritual locations and having them go missing so i was obviously a hat thief in holy places which is also interesting but anyway that's just a side story so emergency thoughts um and um the thing with emer there's quite a lot of things with the emergency thoughts so this um Having a thought which brings up terror, usually, or fear of survival, or loss of something really that one holds dear, brings up the emergency states, which are very, very low. Um, and they actually correlate to the very low levels of consciousness, like guilt and fear and terror. Um, and so what's happening there, which is quite disconnecting if you indulge them, is that uh, we know from muscle testing and Hawkins research that your whole body collapses um, and your energy is reversed, uh, your chi energy is reversed, um, and you start to tune into the attractive fields of fear or, or worse, and you're now tuned into the collective fear thoughts. Your ego is pulling in the worst fear thoughts it can. And, you're, and on top of that, you're disconnected because the adrenaline goes the chi energies break, um, and it's uh, it's almost a self um, a self supporting cycle of negativity. Now that your adrenaline's going, and now that the fear's going, and now that you're connected to a negative, attractive field, 
uh, and all your karmic lessons are flaring up you know you're being hit with the worst possible fears and most terrorizing thoughts and situations just when you thought you were making amazing spiritual progress so it knows how to do that so um uh that's the ego's job and um you know if i take hawkins that this is purgatory and i'm here to um i'm here to undo or learn the lessons or make different choices with all the lessons that are presented to me which my karma my karma brings up and choose again as the course would say or to, i mean i guess the course would say to choose love rather than fear and um and i get the choice now um allegiance to my ego and buying into those thoughts and then um allowing more of those negative thoughts to come in a spiral and let my body get disconnected and of course that then attracts more negative circumstances very rapidly and then extreme disconnection from the high levels of consciousness one was in before which is the ego's thing you know totally to disrupt and sabotage the spiritual connection so what can you do well i think you know just being a, a student of hawkins is to know that all these thoughts every time you buy into them are very very low calibration and they're self-perpetuating and they're actually attracting even more negative and worse negative thoughts and even more negative situations are being magnetically pulled to you so it's like um realizing that and I'm also i'm disconnected my body all my cheese reversed um i'm getting no energy chi energy to my kidneys to my immune system I'll be susceptible to colds, I'll, my body will be weak, uh, you know, so all of this stuff is going on on the physical level, and on the on the spiritual level, my I'm resonating at a very low level of consciousness, I've made the wrong choice, which is to buy into all the, 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 te the test or the temptation, and, uh, and the ego's going for the jugular, uh, maybe not the right words to use, I mean, I'm sure the ego's a lovely animal, and, um, so um uh so yeah there's, there's a number of tools to use one is to um one is to know that um, and one develops a capacity over time if one's intention is set you know like my intention is set for the highest level of enlightenment as uh, my teacher has been revealed to me as david dr david r hawkins uh, i believe he was an avatar at the highest levels you know similar to jesus christ and buddha so i want to resonate with him and uh, be my, actualize my highest spiritual potential in, in this lifetime if it be god's will of course you know i don't know um and i, I you know definitely don't want to become a fallen person um hope not um and um so uh what do you do well it's the thing of, you know, as you get more advanced, it becomes more of a thing of vigilance and uh, setting one's intention to really um, pass the test the ego puts in front of me every day and to develop that spiritual capacity to get stronger and stronger in resisting the, temp the temptations and not buy into them and, and retain those high levels of consciousness. I mean, for me, usually it's physical illness. It can be like suffocation, infections, um, all kinds of things go on in the body. And I'm tempted to buy into that stuff and the negative thoughts around that. Also, I get, uh, I have a lot of financial karma and I get a lot of, um, yeah, I've been recently getting a lot of tests around money and finances. Um, and um, yeah, so is to try and not buy into those, you know, not buy into the negative temptations. For me, it's also, you know, saying no, trying to say no to greed or to attacking people around injustice or whatever and not forgiving them or forgetting that in my defenselessness, my safety lies. So, you know, those temptations when my ego feels um, threatened around money. And um, so all these temptations come and... Uh, you know, sometimes I make, if you make, if I make the wrong choice, I think the 12 steps, you know, I have to quickly make restitution, start praying up a storm, uh, doing a lot of cancelling, uh, a lot of observer, feel the feelings and praying for others. And, you know, the release of my own ego, um, ego, ego um, limitations. So, um, okay, so let's get to the chase then. What's, what's the point uh, of, um, 
these emo well it's to get faster and faster and better and better and more and more capable day by day because these tests the ego will keep testing and testing uh uh i can share the thing with my food thing once you pass the worst possible test in a situation that the ego can pull on you it stops pestering you on that on, in that place it's like you've won the battle for good um i i mean i had that for example where my ego challenged me with an addiction which was food addiction and i'll get these panic attacks if i didn't eat every time i felt i felt in emergency emotions and i was listening to hawkins and um the thing came you know the the thoughts were you know i'd get these panic attacks like i can't breathe i'm going to die unless i just stuff myself full of food and i'd keep stuffing myself full of food even though i mean i it took me to kidney failure and hell, so it wasn't particularly working. Um, and I heard Hawkins say, "You've got to go through. You've got to face. You've got to face the challenge your ego does and walk straight through." I thought, "Yeah, you know, what's my ego saying? Well, if you get a panic attack, you'll die. You can't take it. You've got to go for the. You've got to go for the food." So my ego is saying, "It's life and death unless you eat that food." And when I would eat, you know, binge on food, it would stop the panic attack and I could breathe again. So it was like, it seemed like I had to, you know, I had no, but then I was listening to Hawkins and I said, no, the next time I get like, I, I get a panic attack and I feel like I must eat to cope. Um, and the ego is saying to me, I just reversed it. The ego says, um, you can't breathe. It'll go on forever and you'll drop down dead unless you eat. So I just reversed it. And what's the challenge? The challenge was, are, am I willing to die for the love of God? Well, you know, I'd had a white light spirit, so I knew what, what I what that meant. Am I willing to allow myself to die? Am I willing to allow the feelings to go on for all eternity and not to be able to breathe and then to drop down dead? Because uh, that's what it felt like. Um, and, and go through that, uh, and and be willing to die the next time the next panic attack came. And I said to myself, okay, the next time the next panic attack comes, I'm willing to die. I will sit on a chair. And I'll allow myself to suffocate forever. And I'll die if I have to, but I'm willing to do that. I will not back down to my ego's threats of, you know, the usual coping mechanisms in the world. You know, I'd run to the fridge and, um, and I did that. And um, it was the first time I ever went through a panic attack. You know, it's horrific. I can't breathe. I feel like I'm going to die. It's going to go on forever. And my head's going like mad to pick up the food. And um, I said, OK, well, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And um, it lasted. It was horrific. It lasted, you know, 15 to 20 minutes seemed like an eternity of being unable to breathe and uh, thinking like that was going to go on. You're going to drop down dead. So it was, it was actually a long time. Uh, but after 15 to 20 minutes, I started to be able to breathe again and it passed. And I'd gone through I'd gone through the nightmare that my ego said I would never go through and I could not go through. And, uh, you know, more or less, I never got another panic attack. And um, I'm sort of, I haven't binged out on food now for uh, over 15 years. And the ego doesn't attack me with food any longer. Uh, and, and the fear of panic attacks, it just doesn't happen. It's like I won the battle. So my ego just finds different things to challenge me on where I have to win those battles. So that's one of them. The other thing, of course, is the capacity with emergency emotions to... Um, to train yourself to go to the observer so you don't buy into those thoughts or to do feel the feelings immediately when you go into the emergency thoughts and emotions. Um, and uh, and it, uh, so feel the feelings would be don't buy any thought because the thoughts would perpetuate the uh, ongoing emergency emotions and just allow whatever, even if it's like your heart's racing and you feel in terror, you just don't label it and you just welcome it, invite it, and you just let it run out. And then you start um, pulling yourself up the levels of consciousness and re reconnecting to source. So you just train yourself to do one of those, either it's feel the feelings or either it's um, the observer. If it's like, okay, the heart's racing, there's adrenaline, there's a hundred negative thoughts going at a hundred miles an hour, and they seem to be overwhelming it's like you, there's suddenly a training that you're going to witness. You're going to witness the thoughts, be the witnesser of the thoughts, even if there's hundreds of them, and be the witnesser. Let's say the heart's pounding with terror. 
Low, but something's witnessing because it, you weren't in terror 20 minutes ago and now you are. So there's a witnesser of that. And be the witnesser. Just keep going within to the witnesser and train yourself to pull yourself out until you, until you pull yourself out. So it's like a regimented training and not to go unconscious. You know, you pray for the willingness not to go unconscious and get sucked in and forget to do. You know, so sometimes it's useful to have an alarm to remind you to pull you out. You know, do the observer, do the feel the feelings, do whatever, or even if it's just cancel every negative thought, cancel adrenaline, cancel a beat, beating heart. I'm an infinite being, I'm not subject to that. If I don't buy into it, I, I go to my infinite nature. And I'm not subject to fearful thoughts or adrenaline in the body. Those are not what I am. I cancel all of that. I am the infinite, the infinite that's always here, being uh, not subject to getting sucked into the limitations of separation. So um, you can do that repeatedly. And that will also just is very, very powerful just to say I cancel my belief in that thought, in that feeling uh, continuously, because it, it will start to reconnect you to the infinite, which is your truth. You are an infinite being, but you are limited if you buy anything that's held in the limited mind. Um, so those are the things of just getting more and more, I guess it is like a Zen master, isn't it? More and more able to, when the tests come, to put into practice with vigilance and immediacy, um, those things that can, I guess the Zen master can pull themselves out very rapidly. Whereas, um, uh, someone in the beginning of their spiritual journey might take, you know, they might be in the emergency and fearful thoughts for a few hours before they remember to do any spiritual work and slowly pull themselves out. So that's just the only difference. And I mean, they get an enlightened one, it just doesn't get pulled out. The, 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 the state of the infant is so profound that they can't get pulled out. So that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a joy to look forward to. Um, so, yeah, that's my thing on the emergency mode, which is basically vigilance and developing your skill uh, to imp uh, put into practice when these things come. Um, uh, and also the, the joy of just mastering what used to pull you out with ease before, whatever it is. Okay, I'm going to press um, stop. Okay, um, stop recording.